Hello guys, in this video we're going to scrape real estate properties from rightmove.co.uk So here we have a list of properties for sale in London and here's also a pagination available so we would look over say five pages just to get, just to show uh, an idea of how one can look over the pagination and this sort of a sites and we would extract respectively the title, uh, address, description, and uh, edit date, and uh, the seller uh, and, and the seller basically. That's it. So, if you're interested, let's actually start writing some code. So, I've created a file called writemovescrapper.py, and first we need to import a couple of libraries, libraries here. So, I say uh, import requests, and this is needed to make HTTP get request to the particular URL to fetch data uh, regarding the real estate properties and then uh, from ps4 report beautiful soup and the beautiful soup function allows us to parse the content retrieved from the particular URL endpoint now let's draft a class called uh, write move scraper here we have uh, the four methods. So the first method would be called fetch, and we we'll take uh, the URL as a parameter and pass for now. Then there would be a def uh, parse that would we'll take an HTML response. Then we'll need to store the data to the CSV file, so we'll create a method called to CSV, and this uh, this method takes only uh, the self instance as, as the parameter. So now additional extra parameters there. Pass, and the last one is the run to actually start our scraper. And also, I need to create a little driver to run the scraper. So I say if name equals to main. In this case, we want to say, when we want to create a scraper instance, I'll say scraper equals right move scraper and the run method so scraper dot run and remember that this line is needed uh, uh, for that case if you would like to use this scraper as a module somewhere in, in your projects then uh, if this this one is important is important to some some another file so this lines wouldn't fire but in case if you're running this directly then uh, definitely the scraper instance would be created and the run method would be invoked as well so let's actually try to run this stuff to see if it runs or not so i say python 3 right move scraper.py okay okay it runs so great and now let's uh, imp implement the very first fetch method so I say greater response variable equals to requests dot get and here we would be uh, here we would be getting the URL passed to the fetch method so uh, okay and I also just want to print some debugging information there but for now let's simply just return uh, return the response like this so uh, I don't type return over here just because I want to print some debugging information uh, so oh, well maybe just do it now so say print uh, h the URL here actually so URL like this 
and after I want to say print mm, and just yeah don't really want uh, to make a new line here so I say and equals uh, to nothing so just to wait for any, a new line after this print statement happens so and also I want to print uh, the status code of this response so say this status code and here just simply say response dot status code like this okay so now it seems to be just it and here in the run function we need to invoke our fetch method so I say but but I also want to create another response uh, object uh, whose text will be passed to the parse function later on so uh, response equals fetch and the URL that we're supposed to fetch data from so now let's have a look at our URL so first we'll be using this one when we uh, when we when we will start dealing with pagination we'll change uh, this URL slightly but for now we just need to download a file containing all this data to avoid torturing the right website so we would be extract it would be um, debugging our scraper code that would extract data from the page using the local copy of this particular document so that's exactly what we're supposed to do now so let's actually fetch this uh, uh, the data from that particular URL and also let's invoke self.parse I mean, no, just even well, we can actually store it directly. So I just say with open with open response.html want uh, to write the file string as HTML file, HTML file here. So and I say HTML file dot write and response.txt so all the text that would be retrieved from this response we need we just want to write that to the file called res.html save so let's actually run our scraper one more time okay fetch is not defined well that's because we need to say self.fetch Okay, so it is successfully scraped the page from right move com co uk property sales blah blah blah. So now let's we have a file here. So let's actually um, I just want to open this file in the browser to give you an idea of what the document we have. So everything but CSS and JavaScript. So we have all the needed data here and even the pictures so this is pretty nice we could also store the url the, uh, the picture url as well so th this is this is pretty good and actually uh, we will be extracting um, data using this file because it's slightly a bit different appearance compared to this one so i just uh, open the view source code here and we can also we can probably uh, we can inspect uh, elements here. Okay, so let me just. Okay, so uh, uh, it's a bit easier to inspect the elements uh, in the original in the original page. So if that doesn't work, I will switch to the response that we have just uh, stored. So. I just want to inspect this element for now. Mm. Okay, so this is called a property property card title. Okay, and uh, property card title. So Okay. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Just okay. So let's actually select 
uh, the item that we uh, that we're looking for. So copy and then find this in the source code, and that's the exact class that I've been looking for. So property card title, and let's actually see how many how many of these guys available over here. So paste twenty five. Yeah, that's the exact number of the properties on the page so that's that's actually good so now we need to extract the very first element this uh, property card title class but before doing that uh, we actually need so we don't really need we don't really want to invoke the response for, for now we don't need uh, to write the file so we need actually to call the cell the parse and we need to provide uh, an HTML content to that. So I will just change this uh, right to read and uh, let's create an HTML variable equals to empty string. And also I want to say for line in HTML file, we actually want to populate the HTML variable like this. So HTML equals HTML file read like this. So at this moment uh, uh, we are re we're reading the data from the rest.html file and passing uh, the, and uh, storing its content to the HTML string variable and then we need to pass this HTML variable to our parse function. So in the parse fun function I want to simply print the HTML just to make sure that everything actually works correctly. So let's see. Okay, here we have our HTML, which is really great. Now let's define the content variable uh, equals to beautiful soup, and we take we use an HTML as the first argument to parse, and also specify the LXML parser as a parser to parse this document. So uh, uh, let's actually check that out if it will be, will be parsed. Okay, so it's parsed. Okay, so uh, now let's create the variables uh, uh, to extract data for. So first one would be the title, which would be equal content dot final. And now we need to specify the tag name, so it's h2 tag, so h2 tag, and also specify the class name, uh, property card title, so just copy this uh, class. Uh, here, uh, the, the second arg argument is a dictionary which can be used to specify whatever attribute uh, 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 present and the uh, uh, corresponding tag name. So in this uh, in this case, we're looking for the property card title that regards to h2 uh, yeah regards to h2 tags. And uh, find all function would, would return as a list. So um, well, let's actually uh, let's actually print so what we would have in our title. So we have uh, the, da the data we need, but uh, as you can see here, we also have this uh, tag related stuff, which we really want to kind of avoid. So uh, for this, we'll use the list uh, comprehension technique here. So I will just want to return title uh, dot text for title in content final. And this time, this time we have the list of titles uh, in a better way, but still uh, it has some new lines which we don't really want to have. So let's actually try to strip uh, every element. Okay, now it's really much better. So we have the list of all the uh, titles here. The second thing to consider uh, is actually to extract uh, the address. So mm, let's search for this address. Uh, well, maybe oh, just did something wrong here. Okay, maybe just 
is better to use. Uh, why it doesn't? Oh, it's it's still it's still kind of the same. So I just need to find the element storing this address here. So paste. It's not it's not that. Okay. So it's called property. Uh, yeah, property card address. So it's within the address tag. Well, okay. So let's see. So I hope to see the 25 of these guys as well. So yes, 25 of these guys. Okay, so let's now try to extract. Uh, well, we could have actually. Let me think. So where is we supposed to take? Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, so let's better simply use uh, this meet attack directly with the street address uh, item prop. That's probably a custom attribute or, or something. Well, it doesn't matter. So street address here, uh, and we will need to extract the content out of that. Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Just what have I done? I've just I've just seen that. Okay, so th this is the address we need. <coughs> so uh, let's extract this mid attack. So address would be equal to address. Attack and the attributes are item prop uh, street address and we actually want address content. So hold my breath and try to run this to see if the addresses would be extracted correctly or not. Okay, so it seems like the addresses have been extracted exactly the way it needs to be. Okay, so here are our addresses. And now, uh, what else left here? Um, so this is the description. Okay, let me just... by bedroom minifair probably still a bit different Well, maybe we just can use this property card link text if there are 25 property card links no it's not it's not exactly the number mm. Mm -hmm. so Okay, maybe this property description is a number of 25. Okay, this is great. So we'll use the span with the data task attribute property description. Okay, so um, this 
description equals description. Uh, so this would be the text actually. Yeah, text. description so let's try to see if descriptions so all this probably should have been named in plural so addresses and descriptions because they, they are less okay descriptions okay so do we have an extremely attractive one by duplex. Well, seems like the descriptions are just fine. Okay, so the next thing to extract here is probably the price and also would need to see the link, the URL link. So um, let's see. And the data is also will would also be needed there. So just let me see where is the price well, I'm not sure it's probably okay let's try to uh, don't go don't follow that link Property card. Okay, so is this is the number of twenty-five? Yeah. So this this one we'll use for the prices. So prices equals to price dot text for price in content dot divs this this time we're looking for divs and uh, uh, the class attribute equals to property card price value let's have a look at the prices at the moment so okay okay let's watch, uh, let's also strip this one get rid of those nasty nasty uh, spaces so okay this looks like much better now okay so we, we, we won't really be extracting the currency type here and converting this to, to integers that might have been done but that's not the case for this particular tutorial so I'll just leave these prices as strings okay and what else so we also have um, I just want to extract the date so say this one copy doesn't find for some reason hmm Okay, let's try to search for this one instead. Come on, what's wrong? You had to, you had to find this. Okay, so mm. 
is just we can extract the entire text from here. Okay, copy. Nope, bad idea. Too many elements there. Mm, okay, hold on a sec. Okay, so let's actually use this uh, this particular class. It's 50, but uh, the, they are doubled, so it's basically 25. So span class property card, blah, blah, blah. This would be our date. So save dates equals date text or date in content dot find all. So what kind of tag? Span. Okay, span. And this is the class. Whoa, data is not defined. What do you mean? Oh, data dot text. Data text, of course. Okay, so let's actually take only the date here. So I just want to split and to use the very last element, which is the date. Okay, now it's much better. So we have the dates as well. So another thing to consider is the property card summary branch name. Well, let's call this a seller. So just let me check that out. If okay, it's twenty-five as well. So it's another span here. So okay. class okay sellers so let's have a look at the seller list here okay so just want to avoid this by so I just want to say dot split by and the very last element or maybe maybe the very first element okay let's see Probably it's the very last element. Okay, so I want to strip this. Get rid of this that nasty uh, space at the very beginning of each one. So that's it. Okay. Okay. Seems like it's just fine. Okay, so now. So did we already extract the prices? Yeah, apparently we did, the sellers. So probably this is it. Let me just quickly check that out one more time. Yeah, so like the very main information regarding. Okay, so probably um, also let's try to extract this URL, image URLs. Uh, okay, copy image address. And let's find this here. Oh my god, so big address. Uh, well, it's definitely. Mm. Okay, so it seems like this image. Mm. Just wondering how many, how many images here. Oh, it's pretty a lot of those. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me just find a better way. Okay, we're searching them by item prop uh, attribute. So, say the images equals to image. And we want to use the source for the image. And say for image in content. 
dot find all image. For some reason, it's bad. Okay, is that item prop? Oh, it's item prop is just one word. No dash here. Okay. Okay, now let's try to grab. Uh, let's try to grab one of these guys. Okay, so we get our image. Okay, so well, this is basically it. And now mm, we need to create a list of dictionaries, basically for. We just want to. Uh, okay, let me just let me just quickly demonstrate what I want to do here. So uh, first, we need to look over the range of uh, indexes of uh, all of these items. I say for index in range from 0 to length of whatever elements of this one or this ones because uh, all, all uh, or because the length of every every of each uh, uh, of this of these items is equal to 45. So let's say land title like this and here Okay, just hold on a sec. And here we put, we'll create uh, an item uh, which would be a type of uh, Python dictionary. So for every single uh, for every single item here. So let's do the title and address. description and price and date and seller and image and this would be respect to the titles index Now descriptions. Item to make sure that everything works okay. So I'm just going to print JSON dumps item and use the indentation equals to two spaces. So let's actually try. Okay, uh, we gotta put a column here. Okay. Is not defined. Excuse me. Okay, hold on a sec. Oh, so of course not the title, but the titles. Mm. Okay, so here we have each element that contains the information we need. So let's say the title, three bedroom duplex for sale, address, description, price, date and seller and image so this is kind of it now i also want to create a variable uh, called uh, well, results uh, results this would 
be a type of Python list. So actually here, instead of printing the stuff, we simply want to append this dictionary to the results list. So I say self dot results dot append and append this stuff here. So now let's see if this thing works. Okay. And now it's uh, actually time. Well, probably now we would be writing this to CSP a little bit later on. Oh, but okay, we can actually implement this at the moment. So uh, I just say with open uh, results dot only right move dot CSV. Want to write the file stream as CSV file here. So also we need to import the CSV module basically. So don't need JSON anymore basically. So just want to import CSV instead. And here I need to create a writer. So writer equals CSV. Here I'll use the dictionary writer, which is called dict writer, that is available to write uh, Python dictionaries, uh, to, to write uh, the list of Python dictionaries uh, to the CSV file. So this this is really handy to be honest. That's my weapon of choice for all the scrapers I write. Okay, the first parameter is the CSV file stream itself, and the second parameter is called the field names. So, uh, in order to get the, in the field names, we need to use, well, uh, we can take it from, say, self.results. And as far as this is the list, we can reference the index of the very first index, and we want to extract, no, not the key, the values, yeah, the keys. The keys. So, the keys would be the column names here. And now, uh, also, we need to write a header. So, header says, so say, writer. Dot right here and now we need to loop over the uh, rows of the results list so I say for row in self dot results like this I want to say writer dot right row and the row as an, as an argument so let's actually try to see whether it works or not so also, well, seems like, did it actually? Okay, uh, I just didn't call it to CSV here. So, self dot to CSV, and also I need to, I want to write some body information. So print, uh, uh, stored results. Okay, list object is not callable. Well, of course, what, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah. Okay, so here is our CSV file. Let's quickly have a look at that. So, just open this using the LibreOffice. I don't open this in my text editor because uh, it starts lagging really, really badly af after. So don't need this. Are you sure you want to discard? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Okay, so here is our data basically. We have the title, address, description, date, price, seller, image, URL, all this stuff. And we have 25 entries because the word first is used for the column names okay so this is just great and now the very last but not but not least thing uh, the remains here is actually instead of uh, scraping the only uh, the only page the data from the only page we need to scrape the data from the range of pages so we need to crawl uh, the pages for London that for, for, for London properties 
Okay, so at this point we don't really need uh, this code anymore, so we just get rid of that. Mm. And so we don't really need this HTML as well. Mm. And now uh, here is a little trick here. So if we just go go to the very bottom uh, and say go to the next page see that the URL has been changed and the, uh, what we need here is this um, parameter called index so if I switch this to 40 to 48 I would navigate to the page number three so let me just quickly demonstrate you that so here I am on the page number three so if I just want to uh, start from the page number one and go for some say five pages so I should have started with uh, index equals to zero so like this so here uh, I would be uh, uh, I will see the very first page again so the page number one so uh, we'll be using this exact link so I just say copy here and here in the run so let's specify the uh, URL URL equals to this this one and here uh, instead of the uh, uh, the hard coded value for index I just want to use the value I need and uh, I will use uh, index like this okay so Let's just uh, let's just comment this out before I want to debug uh, this index this indexing stuff. So uh, index equals to zero. Save and I just want to print the URL. So let's no request just to print the URL itself. Not enough arguments for string formatting. What do you mean not enough arguments? Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, so it has uh, mo more than one percentage here. So instead of actually specifying the index like that, I, I would just use this string concatenation instead. So just create at least a couple of strings here um, and make it plus. And if I just use the index, it won't work because the index is a type of integer. But yeah, it's not a string. Okay, so let's stringify this. Okay, so we now have the index. Where is the index? Equals to zero. Okay, let's change this to 24. Okay, now we have the index of 24. Great. So, uh, actually, this moment we need to loop over the range of the pages. So I say for page and range. Let's let's take. Let's take some, let's take, basically this would be basically four pages. Let's have five, okay. And uh, index would be equal page multiplied by 24. So now let's see if the URL is generated correctly. So the very first, uh, okay, maybe, uh, let's start from the very from zero like this, okay. So index zero, index twenty four, index twenty eight, seventy not seventy two, and ninety six. So this is the exact. This is the exact. Uh, uh, these are the exact indexes that we're supposed to 
have. So the only thing left here is actually to make a response, uh, to make a request each time. So now we will be using the instead of this hard coded URL, we'll be using the dynamic URL that we've just created. So URL here, and also we want to parse. But we want to parse not the HTML, but in this case, response.text. And at the very end of that, we want actually to write the data to the CSV file. Okay, so it's time to hold my breath and try to run this scraper and to see what happens. Okay, so making the request to the pages one by one incrementing the index here well this index is out of range i'm not sure what does this regard property card range summary added or use so probably some some didn't contain the date but still seems like uh we actually scraped all the data let me just quickly check that out um, okay so just open the view, view folder here and again, we just want to check that out. The number of okay, so okay, hold on a sec. Okay, so uh, I'll just try to uh, remove the split and try to run the scraper one more time. Okay, now it's just fine. So let's view the results here. It's probably the date is formatted a bit different ways in different files, so that's the reason you couldn't split this by empty space because there were probably no empty spaces. So that's the reason why the minus one index of the very last element wasn't actually available. Okay, so here is our data from the five pages scraped. Okay. I'm not sure why this is probably a bit too long description. That's the reason of doubling the lines here. Okay, but still that doesn't really matter that much. So and what what about the data? So add it on, reduce on add it on. Well I'm not sure why he actually did fail to Mm, to split that, but and he actually did fail to split on the very last, on the very last element. Okay, let me just quickly check that out, and if I can find out what's wrong, I'll tell you guys. Okay, guys, it seems I found an easy solution. So let's actually specify explicitly that we want to split by white space. So in this case, the program works uh, correctly. So. Here, here we have. So I was just making, uh, I was testing the very last page. So let's actually try to run the scraper one more time. So I delete this right move scraper uh, CSV file results and store everything and save and run this again. So making the request to pages one by one and yeah, here we get the results. Just view the folder here, and it's the old file. Mm. Probably he developed already that. Nope. Okay. Yeah, so here it is. Now the date, yeah, now the date is only the date and nothing else but the date. Okay, guys, so this is it for this video, and I hope uh, you find something useful.
for yourselves here so go take care